Hello all, I am Dr. Anand Nayar, PhD in Computer Science. I welcome you all to my YouTube channel Gyan with Anand Nayar. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned to all the technology videos on Linux administration, open source, Windows administration, embedded systems, Kali Linux, simulations, big data, machine learning, programming, deep learning, IoT, virtualization, unboxings and many more. If you want to know more about my, the details of my video, you can click on the playlist and you can find more details of the videos on which I make on my YouTube channel. If you want to know more about my research, you can go to Google Scholar and you can search my name Dr. Anand Nayar and you can find all my research papers over here. And similarly, you can even go to researchgate.net and you can find my detailed profile and even my level of research over here and you can find all the coordinates of my current research scenarios on this website. And similarly, you can even go to google.com and you can search my name as Anand Nayar and you can find my website and every coordinate needs of my of my research everything over this search so i request you to subscribe to my youtube channel and stay tuned gyan with anand Nayar, your ultimate resource for technology thank you hello researchers how are you i hope you are fine and doing well in this video i will be demonstrating how to install oracle enterprise linux on oracle virtual box now before we dive in the installation part of Oracle Enterprise Linux on Oracle VirtualBox, let us first of all get ourselves aware regarding what is meant by Oracle Linux. Oracle Linux, also known as Oracle Enterprise Linux, is a Linux distribution packaged and freely distributed by Oracle, available partially under the GNU General Public License since late 2006. It is compiled from Red Hat Enterprise Linux source code, replacing Red Hat branding with Oracle's. It is also used by Oracle Cloud and Oracle Engineered Systems such as Oracle Exadata and others. Potentially users can freely download Oracle Linux through Oracle e-delivery service that is Oracle Software Delivery Cloud or from a variety of mirror sites or can deploy and distribute it without any cost. The company's Oracle Linux support program aims to provide commercial technical support covering Oracle Linux and existing RHEL or CentOS installations but without any certification from the former that is without reinstallation or reboot. As of 2016, Oracle Linux has over 15,000 customers subscribed to customer support program. Now let us discuss something regarding RHEL capability or compatibility. Oracle Corporation distributes Oracle Linux with two alternative Linux kernels. The one Red Hat compatible kernel Linux that is RHCK identical to kernel shipped in RHEL and second is unbreakable enterprise kernel that is UAK which we will be using in this video based on newer mainline Linux kernel version with Oracle's new enhancements for OLTP, InfiBand, SSD disk access, NUMA optimizations, reliable datagram sockets that is RDS, Async IO, OCF S30 S2 and networking. Oracle promotes unbreakable enterprise kernel as having 100% compatibility with RHEL. Oracle claims this allows unchanged installation and runs of Oracle middleware and third-party RHEL certified applications, but it doesn't provide any reference to third-party documentation. Hardware compatibility. Oracle Linux is certified on servers including from IBM, HP, Lenovo, Cisco. In 2010, Force 10 announced support for Oracle VM server for x86 Oracle Linux. Oracle Linux is also available on Amazon EC2 as an Amazon virtual machine and on Microsoft Windows Azure as a VM image. Oracle Sun servers with x86-64 processors can be configured to ship with Oracle Linux. So virtualization support, Oracle Linux supports KVM and Zen. So Oracle uh, Corporation uses Oracle Linux extensively with Oracle Public Cloud internally to lower IT cost. So other products which are related to Oracle Linux are Oracle Exagator, Oracle Exalogic, Oracle Big Data Appliance, Oracle Exalytics, Oracle Database Appliance. So this was the basic introduction and now let us come to the part B of this video in which I will be telling you how to download Oracle Linux from Oracle website or you can even do via Google search and you can download from mirror sites but from Oracle website you will get better support and even you can say better speeds to download. So the first thing is you have to open that either you can go to google.com and you can just search Oracle Linux. 
so you can even go to this website i have already opened this website over here so in order to download you just have to click on this link so this link will open this thing so you have to create a new user or either if you have a username or password even let me tell you even i am a oracle certified professional so uh, even my java and oracle 12c certification are also with this login account so i don't have to make a new account so i've already signed in and you can see this is my email id and i've already signed in so i have already searched oracle linux 7.4 and you can see that the oracle linux 7 7.5 is also available so that depends on you which version do you want to use but there are few minor glitches or changes but the installation will remain almost the same so this is how you can download and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, work on it so let us go uh, to our oracle vm virtual box manager and let us start with the installation part so here is the image so if i click on properties you can find find it is about 4.60 gb so this is a heavy installation so let's go to Oracle Virtual Box. So let's click on New. So let's type Oracle Linux 7.4 and I take 2018 so it is type Linux and version is Oracle 64 bit so it is correct so click on next so I allocate 6 GB of RAM to this so I click on next click on create click on next next so I allocate at least 35 GB of hardness space to Oracle Linux so I click on create so I click on settings so I click on advanced and I click on bi-directional over here I go to system and I remove the floppy disk drive and I make it processor is 2 and I enable it so for storage I just click on empty and I browse over here and I click this image so I click on open and for network it is already NAT so no need to make any change so I click on OK so now we are ready to set off and start the installation of Oracle Linux 7.4 so make it sure that it is already uh, observed or it is made from uh, RHEL uh, source code so all the installation will be based on RHEL. So now you can see that the open, uh, uh, open box that is the open welcome screen so let's click on view and full screen so now you can see there are three options install test this media and troubleshooting so let's first of all click on the first option install Oracle Linux 7.4 and let's press enter. So the installation will be like Red Hat or CentOS so there will be very little change which you can find as compared to Red Hat and Oracle because why Oracle is already taking the Linux from Red Hat source code. So that's why it is available free of cost but the technical support is somewhat commercial so you have to buy the technical support so that for your uh, break free delivery but otherwise the source code and the kernel of Oracle Linux is more stable as compared to other free freehand Linuxes. So you can see that it is starting the installer. So we have to wait for some time. So again, you can see that it is Anaconda, which is going to run the installation part. So again, the black pointer has come. So the first is the welcome to Oracle Linux. So the first is the language. So language is already English United States. So there is no need to change. So I click on continue. So over here we have the time zone. So let's first of all click over here and I just go to Okay, I take uh, Okay, I take Bangkok. Okay, it's okay. Okay, so language support is there. So software selection. So let's go with that is server with GUI. So if you do with minimal install, it will be only uh, command based installation. So server with GUI will be the okay better. So I click on done. And after that, I click on automatic partitioning. So it is done. So let's click on done over here. So KDump, I don't need a KDump, so I disable it. So you can see that everything has been set up. So network and host name. So what I do, I just go for on so that it should be connected properly. So I click on done and no security profile is required so it is okay so I click on begin installation so this is all what we have to do and the installation will fire like a butter so I just set the root password so root password is set if you want to create a user I create one user with my name and I click on done so user is set root password is set it is all starting and believe me it is going to run very smooth so till it uh, you can see that about uh, 1284 packages are to be installed so it will take some time so till it install let me first of all pause the video for some time and I will get back once it is almost on the verge of completion 
So now you can see that almost 962 packages are installed and it has taken about 6 to 7 minutes to come over here. So it will again take 5 to 6 minutes more and then I return back. So now we can say that almost 97% of the installation is done. So let's click on view and full mode. So let's wait for the installation to get complete. I think so it is completing. Yes, so now it is performing post installation setup tasks. So now you can see that the post installation has done. So it is generating initremfs. All the users are created and we are at the final stages of completion of the pre-installation and after that the reboot we will go for post installation. So let's wait for it to complete. Now it is running post installation and now you can see that it is completed. So now what we have to do is to just click on reboot. So let the system reboot and after rebooting we will be starting up with the post installations. So I can say that Oracle Linux is somewhat faster as compared to CentOS but not as fully fast as compared to Red Hat. This is what we can observe right now. So I think it is booted and we should be greeted with a welcome screen anytime now. Okay, so now you can see that the license not accepted. So let's click over here and I accept the license agreement and click on done and it is connected. So let's finish the configuration. So here we have the Oracle Linux, so same you can see the interface like Red Hat or CentOS. So let's click on Anandaya and uh, here is the password. So here is a wonderful desktop what we have. So if we click on application, so again we have the same like favorites, accessories, documentation, internet, office and sound and video but the options are very low as compared to other Linuxes. So let's go to open terminal. So here is the basic thing so let's skip it. Okay. Okay. So let's log in with root so let's give this name who am I and uh, so the hostname CTL you can see that uh, Oracle Linux Server 7.4. So the next thing is first of all let's go with the update of the system. So let's type this command that is yum update. So let it queries all the repositories online and let it update all the packages. So depending on the net connection it will give you more speed but you can find better speed is coming. Okay, so uwiki we are using as a kernel, so about 676 packages are there which requires to be updated. Let's wait for it to finish. So this is Oracle Linux 7 latest. How many packages I don't know. Ok. 
Okay, so lots of packages. So if you are interested to do that, you can do that with pressing yes. It is somewhat slow I can say. So the download size you can see it is about 650 MB. So for this video I will not go for any download. So I click on no. And so let's go with the kernel name that is with the, with the command that is uname minus a. So here is the kernel. Okay, so let's install the, uh, the guest editions for this. So let's give this command yum install kernel minus u a key hyphen devil hyphen dollar bracket u name space hyphen r. So let's press enter. So let's have to kill. Okay, so here we have the dependencies. So it's not a bigger package, we can install it. So 57 MB, let's press Y and press enter. So let's press Y for PKI. So after this installations, we will go with the Linux uh, kernel editions installation. Okay, so let's clear this, exit and exit. So now what we have to do is to go for this option go for devices insert guest edition CD so let's click on run so it will demand the password let's demand the password so it will is going to install all the virtual box editions so after the reboot you can just go with the copy paste in this edition So let's wait for it to install. So in this video I have demonstrated how to install Oracle Linux 7.4 edition. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Do like this video. Thank you so much for watching.